and then you put the two ends like overlap them and do this. Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you would like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below. And there you will find information and a link to the Ravelry page where you can see all of my designs. Also in the description below, you will find a link to my Facebook Watch Barbara Knits group, which I'd love to have you join. And that is someplace where we can continue the conversation that we are having here on this video. I also love to chat with people in the comments below, so feel free to comment on this video itself. The description below is going to be a place you really wanna visit this time because it is the first fave five of 2018. And it is in response to a couple comments that have popped up in the Wash Barber Knits group with someone wanted to knit a baby blanket and asked for recommendations. And then somebody's like, you should do a fave five on baby blankets. I'm like, I can do a fave five on baby blankets. So baby blankets, that is what we are looking at. I think that everyone has to knit a baby blanket at least once in their life. Um, and by has to, I am not saying that you have to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But most people find themselves in the situation where they have to knit a baby blanket whether they really want to or not but most of the time baby blankets are something that you are really knitting all the love you possibly can into so that is a fun thing and it needs to be a fun pattern what fave five is is me looking through ravelry and picking out my favorite five patterns under a specific topic that what is striking me right at that moment i'm not saying that this is the these are the best baby blankets and all the other baby blankets are horrible there are tons of wonderful baby blankets. I'm just saying that when I was looking at Ravelry today, these are the ones that tickled my fancy. So here we go with my fave five baby blankets. And to start with, and actually I need to mention that I have it open on my screen over here. So when you see me look over here, that's what I'm doing. And I am looking at this absolutely beautiful blanket and it is called The Little Dearest Baby Blanket by Angela Tong and it is just adorable. It is knit in a very classic baby blanket style, which is actually, I've knit one baby blanket in my, well, I've knit more than one baby blanket, but I've knit uh, at least one in this shape. And what it is, is you start at a point, it's a square baby blanket. You start at a point, you increase until it's the width you want, and then you decrease. So you're making a square on the bias so that all the rows are running. If you hold it square, all the rows are running diagonally across. So, and I don't even think it's really biased. No, I shouldn't have said bias. It's not biased. They're, they're biased, but it's not biased fabric. Bi fabric is a whole different thing. But they're super cool and you can customize them to the amount of yarn you have. So literally, if you are like, hey, I have these two big skeins of yarn, you increase for one skein and decrease for the other skein and you're good to go. So it's good for customizing. This particular one takes a bunch of my blocks check boxes for baby blankets. I think that baby blankets most of the time for me personally need to be a little on the easier side, a little bit more um, meditative so I can think about the baby and whoever's having the baby. I, I don't necessarily want something that's really crazy mentally challenging. Um, so, but I want something that's going to keep my interest. So this one is a combination of garter and a fun stitch that alternates. So it's just enough because all garter will, you know, sometimes get a little bit boring, but it can be awesome because it's so squishy. So whatever. This is a little dearest baby blanket by Angela Tong. It is designed for worsted weight yarn. Specifically, it is in Miss Babs Yowza. And I believe it's one of those ones where you take two skeins and do exactly what I just said. So this one would be super awesome to knit up for any baby in your life or, you know, just to throw over the back of your couch if there are no babies incipient in your world. Next up, going in a very different direction, is this is called the Layer Cake Blanket by Larissa Brown. And I thought this one looked super cool and would be really fun 
to customize if you really know what kind of colors the baby's nursery is going to be in. And this is one, when I said I've only, I've only knit one baby blanket, I've crocheted multiple baby blankets. And this, I've crocheted a blanket like this before where you work in strips and then attach those strips together, which is how you get these big stripes. But this is also a really good one if you wanted to play with short rows because the way she's getting those kind of tilting blocks is with short rows, but nothing particularly challenging, just a little bit of fun to keep it interesting. Again, and it's in garter. Garter is a wonderful squishy thing, but then you've got these extra lines that are delineating. I don't know. I just really like this pattern. I think it looks like a lot of fun. The designer Larissa said that the pattern is easy to memorize. And um, when she was knitting it, the way they tilted back and forth made her think of the pale frosting and a teetering chocolate cake. And sounds like she makes cakes the way I do, because when I try to put cake together and... <laughs> I was making one cake and I'm like, I had the layer and I put this frosting and I put the other one and, the, and I turned around and then it did like, ee, 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 I'm like, oh no. And so then I get it back on and I turn around to do something and then it slid off again. <laughs> the third time it literally broke in half and went off both sides. So me and cakes, um, I buy them. I buy cakes or I do flat cakes, but I've gone off the subject entirely. This is a fabulous blanket. It's the cake blanket, um, layer cake blanket, but I think it'd be fun to use up. I like that it's got that single contrasting color that ties the three colors together. I think you could do as many colors as you want. This is designed to use Barocco Comfort Chunky. So a bulky weight yarn. So it's going to knit up very fast. And obviously this is one that you could also make substantially larger if you want a big person size blanket. So that is the Layer Cake Blanket by Larissa Brown. Deep breath, slow down. I guess you notice I, I speed up as I talk. <laughs> now. This one, I may or may not have been unduly influenced by this baby. <laughs> this baby is so cute, but I love this blanket. And again, a square blanket is a very traditional shape for a baby blanket, but this one is a little bit interesting. This is Dreams of Granada Blanket by Triona Murphy. And this one, instead of normally uh, a square blanket starts at the middle and you work your way out and you just get as big as you want. This one, actually, you cast on the whole outside and you work your way in. Which, casting on that many stitches, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure would be daunting. A little tip, when you're casting on that many stitches, what you want to do is use stitch markers and place them like every 25 stitches. So then you're not going back and recounting constantly. Um, and with this one, you probably might want to place them every 25 stitches and then a fancy one like every 100 <laughs> stitches to keep track. But the plus side is your rows are going to get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And by the end, you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to be done in no time. So I can totally see how this would be fun. This is, looks like a very warm blanket. And I love the subtle details that she's included with the cables. This is designed... Um, in Erin weight yarn, one of the ones she recommends is Lion Brand Wool Ease. So that is a very readily available yarn. Also Knit Pick Swish and Brava. So you have a lot of really reasonably priced choices in yarn like that. And she also says it'll work as a couch throw. Doo, doo, doo. And her pattern includes tips on casting on a large number of stitches. So I'm super curious what her tricks are. I love it when a designer tells me tricks. And if you go to the project page on this, you really got to scroll through the projects. There's one where they did like a gradient where it starts with one color and then goes in and goes through different colors. So that is super cool. You could do it with stripes. This is just a beautiful blanket that is really, I just think really elegant and looks like it would be um, very straightforward to knit. You've got the interesting cabling around the edges, but then you have a fairly large amount of stockinette where it could just be travel knitting and you can carry it around. But then once you get in the middle, you've got more interesting cables. So Dreams of Granada by Triona Murphy and Ridiculously Cute Baby. <laughs> I think if I had a baby like that, I'd probably design baby blankets too. <laughs> Next, going in a completely different direction, this is the Endless Squares Blanket. And this is a completely different approach to doing a blanket, which I think is a lot of fun. It is designed to work with sock yarn scraps. This is by Simone Carette. Did I already say that? Who knows? And she, 
she says in her description something that really speaks to me <laughs> because I look at all these scrappy blankets and they're beautiful and I love them. And let me tell you, I got scraps. I have a friend who made a scrappy blanket. There's a whole bunch of tiny fish. It's amazing. But all I do when I look at that is go, that's a whole lot of seaming and a whole lot of weaving and ends, neither of which are things that I really want to invest large chunks of time in. But then I'm reading her description and she said that you really don't have to weave in ends and you don't have to sew anything together. So in the pattern, she is instructing you on how to make these individual mitered squares, but they build on each other. So you're not having to seam them together. And she talks about, the she has instructions on how to spit splice the different yarns together and spit splicing is is truly precisely what it sounds like you would need to use a wool yarn for this and spit splicing takes advantage of the fact that wool felts and literally you take the two ends of your wool and you pui pui spit in your hand or you know you could use a little bit of water and then you put the two ends like overlap them and do this you like rub it together and the heat and the friction causes them to felt together and poof, your ends have been joined. Now they will be like a little lump, but I don't think it's going to be particularly noticeable as this is in garter. And so it'll be fine. Mitered squares are super fun because what you do is you start with like a line and you do decreases in the middle and it brings it in and brings it in. And you end up with a square and it's like magic. So for all those reasons, I thought this would be a super fun baby blanket to make. Um, I think that you could really have a lot of fun using your scraps, but also picking out multiple different colors that would go with the decor of the baby the involved in this whole situation. Or again, you could just make it for yourself. Um, and she says here, should you decide later to make it bigger, you can actually add on to it. So that's super cool. Again, it's designed for sock yarn. Um, she used a bunch of scraps, but she gives you yardage. So I am sure that you could just buy, you know, several different colors and do it sort of like a patchwork quilt. So that is the Endless Squares Blanket by Simone Carette. And then we've got this one. I think this one looks so smooshy. This is called Pico and it is by Nell Knits. It is another where it's a square blanket that's knit from the point and then back again, like the first one we talked about, but this one has really interesting, look how, look at the edging on it. It's got these little bumpy guys. And I think that brings a lot of interesting texture and there are little eyelets, if you look carefully in each of those little crenellations. So I think this is a super cool blanket. It does look like it would be very easy to carry around and work on as you're going because it is straightforward, but it's just got that little bit of interest to it that I think would keep you going. I think this could work really well if the baby is going to be in a more um, modern environment. Um, if you, I, I'm visualizing this with like Ikea furniture, <laughs> you know, it could be, it, it, it falls into the almost minimalist category, but it's still really interesting. I like it. It has almost, um, to me, it has almost an arts and crafts feel to it. So I really like this. This is designed for neighborhood fiber company, Studio Worsted. So it's for worsted weight yarn. So it's going to knit up fairly quickly. And she has it designed 30 inches square. So it's a little more of a swaddling blanket, but, or, you know, to put on a stroller or to put on a car seat. I think that it is a fun, and she said it's also known as the super squishy baby blanket. I can totally see that because it looks awesomely squishy. She also says this can be worked in any yarn weight to any squared size. As I mentioned, what you do is you knit until it's the width you want, and then you bring it back down because it's a square. The baby blanket that I knit for my nephew, I did it in a square and I sort of, misjudged and it ended up being really really big but it was big and beautiful and the recipient loved it so those are my fave five baby blankets y'all can knit this up 
and I was thinking about it. I have not yet designed a baby blanket. I think I'm going to fix it because you know what? This really inspired me and I think baby blankets could be a lot of fun, but I was racking my brain about the patterns I have and I thought, you know what? This one, this is the peephole stole. And what this is, is it is a rectangular stole worked on the bias with just little tiny bits of mosaic lace. Oh, I'm getting really close to my mom. Sorry about that, guys. So you can see it's a very simple mosaic lace pattern. It has these little peepholes in it and it's knit from this end. This is the cast on, right? And then it's just knit like this. So you get a diagonal all the way down here on this side. And what I was thinking is that if you cast on more stitches, I mean, because it's just a rectangle and didn't knit it quite so long, then it would be a baby blanket. So you definitely could do that. This is designed in fingering weight, but if you did it in a heavier weight yarn, it could definitely be a super cool baby blanket. And I've, I've since it's called a peephole stole, I was thinking it could be the peekaboo blanket, but I'm guessing that name's already taken on Ravelry, but I don't know. If anybody wants to knit a blanket version of this and would like me to come up with, you know, we might be able to work something out. You know, I always, I have more ideas than I have hands to knit. And I sometimes use sample knitters to knit things up, but you'd have to send it to me so I could take pictures of it. But there we go. And I love this, I love this stole. It is a great scarfy thing. And it works, this uses a gradient. It was designed, if you can see, it goes different colors, but it's super cool. Okay, I got sidetracked. <laughs> I hope that maybe this has given you some information. If you are looking for a baby blanket to knit, please check out the description below where you will find links to where you can get these patterns from all of the wonderful designers that I featured. If you like this video, please click the like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications and share this video with any of your friends who you think might be interested. Thank you so much.